So we saw the examples dealing with the men putting away the tent peg. Now let's see the example of the female with a wicked tent peg. Here we go. First Samuel 25, 2 through 42. Now there was a man in Maran, Maan, whose business was in Kamal. And the man was very rich. This man was rich. He had 3,000 sheep and a thousand goats, and he was sharing his sheep in Kamal. Here he is about to make a feast. Rich man. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. <clears throat> and she was a woman of good understanding. Here she is, a good understanding in him. Nabal, in Aubrey, a fool, foolish man. She was in good understanding, beautiful appearance, but the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was from the house of Caleb, wicked man. When dude heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, dude sent 10 men, 10 young men, and dude said to the young men, go up to Kamal, go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him, who lives in prosperity. You're living in prosperity. This is what you should say to him. Shalom. Shalom be unto you. Shalom to your house. Shalom to all that you have. Now I've heard that you have shears, your shepherds here with us, and we did not hurt them, nor was anything missing from them all while they were in Kamal. They watched over them. They watched over his shepherds, made sure nothing happened to them. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servant and to your son, Dude. So when Dude's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all the words in the name of Dude and waited. And Nabal answered Dude's servants. Watch Nabal. And said, who is dude? Who is dude? I don't know dude. That's what our people would do. That's what wicked people would do. Who is dude? Why you don't know dude? You, you tell, talk about someone in scripture today, they'd be like, who is that? I don't know that. I don't know that person. You mentioned Shaul, Paul. They know Paul. Who is dude? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays. This is how he's talking. There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shares and give it to men when I don't even know where they are from? I don't even know them. I don't know where they're from. Don't even know them. So do young men tur turn on their heels and went back and they came and told all the words, all these words. Then dude said to the men, every man gird on his sword. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Are you kidding me? He wouldn't give them food? Every man gird on his sword? It's wartime now? Whoa. Did Nabal become dude enemy? Why didn't dude barack his enemy? Here's another point. We don't see dude doing this. We see dude putting gird on his sword. So every man gird on his sword. And dude also was girding on his sword. And about 400 men went out with dude. And 200 stayed with the supplies. Now one of the young men told Ab Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look, dude sent messengers from the wilderness to, to greet our master. And he reviled them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them. When we were in the fields, they were on the wall. They were a wall to us, both by night and day, all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, no one consider what you will do. Look, we have servants no better than the masters. For harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel. 
that one cannot speak to him. Why did they name him this name, the ball? Then Abigail made haste. Look, quickly, here's the righteous person. Quickly, made haste, took 200 loaves of bread. She's going against her husband here. See, see, women, when the husband is going off, here's a point. When the husband is doing something wicked, don't follow them. Go against them. You don't need his approval. You don't need his approval to leave him. You do not need his approval. No matter what anyone tells you, you don't need his approval. She's doing something behind his back. He has no idea what she's doing. She's doing something he refused to do. She's doing something he didn't want done. She's a virtuous woman. She's a learned woman. She's a woman full of understanding and knowledge. And she's operating in her knowledge right now. So she made haste, took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five seals of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs. Look, and she loaded them on the donkey. She loaded the donkeys down with food. And she said to her servants, go on before me. See, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband the ball. Why? He would be a thorn in her side. He would stand in the way. He would forbid the servants to do that. It would be one order against the other. And him being the master of the house, the servants would listen to him and not her. So who says for the woman to sit down, shut up and be quiet? Nobody listened to Shaul, that wicked man. So it was. The woman is to keep silent. The woman is to keep quiet. The woman is to be submissive to her husband. Why didn't this woman be submissive to her husband? Why is she, why does she have to do something behind his back? She did not tell her husband. Shaul would have said, this woman is wicked. Let me tell you, let's call her ace, ace and a spade a spade. Shaul would say, this woman is wicked. He would tell Nabal, put this tit peg away. So we call righteousness wicked and we call wicked righteousness. This is what our people are doing today. They call Shaul righteous. You say something about someone else. You know, this person is wicked just because they speak against Shaul. You just wait. You're going to be in Shaul coughing up fire. You're going to be in Sha you're going to be in a dark, loneliest place wishing you had listened when you were told. But you didn't get a visit from the Most High. So may Yahuwah not hear your prayer when you call out to him. This is what the righteous are saying. Who do you think the Most High is going to honor? So if your husband or your wife is wicked, pray to the Most High that, that he does not hear their prayers. Noah answered them when they call on him. No matter what, could, no matter what they need, he does not supply it for them. You need to be freed from something. So it was. She rode on the donkey and she went down. She went down under cover in the hill. And there were dude and his men coming down toward her and she met them. And dude and now dude has said, surely in vain, I have protected all that the fellow, that this fellow has in the wilderness. Surely in vain, we protected all them and for nothing. But that's okay. We got something for them. This is what dude's mind. This is what's on dude's mind. We got something for them. See, a lot of our people, they would have been right beside the ball and say, who is this dude? We don't know dude. So that nothing was missed. And all that belong to him. And he has repaid me evil for good. Our people are repaying. Listen, these wicked people are repaying sons and daughters of life, of light. They repay them evil for good. This is what they do. This is all they know to do. And when a righteous man speak, oh, I, I don't want to hear that. I'm, that that's not setting right with me. It's not because you're wicked. The righteous words of the Most High is not going to set right with these people. May Yahuwah do so.
and more also to the enemies of do. Wait a minute, stop the press. May Yahuwah do so and more also. He's praying. Here's his prayer. This is what's in Dude's heart. This is what should be in our heart. This is what's in my heart. And may Yahuwah do so and more to my enemies. So come against, become my enemy if you like. May he do all of this and more to the enemies of Dude. If I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light, he's saying I'm going to kill all of them. Wait a minute. Hold up, dude. You're not supposed to kill your enemies. You're supposed to love your enemies. You know, the New Testament says we are to love our enemies. How is it he's loving? Is it he didn't give him food? Listen, these men, dude was the anointed Mashiach. This is the one he said, touch not my anointed. The anointed is Mashiach. The king of Yasharal, touch not this one. Not your Christian pastors. Not your camp leaders. Nobody today is the Mashiach. None. So he was the Mashiach. And see these pastors, they want to say, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. And they want to relate themselves to both prophet and Mashiach. And you can't do that. So he was going to kill all of them by the morning light. Now when Abigail saw Dude, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before Dude. Look what she's doing. Now here's a point for the righteous females. Can you do what Abigail's, or what we're about to see here? She dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before Dude. She bowed down to the ground quickly. Off the donkey, straight to the ground. Can you do this to one of the most highest men? To the Mashiach? Could you do this to Abraham? Would you bow down to, uh, to the ground to Abraham? So she fell at his feet and said, On me. Look at this. Look at this woman. Look at this woman. On me, my master. On me, let this iniquity be. Let it fall on me. I take the blame. She's like, I should have been here. I will take the blame. And please let your main servant speak in your ears. Please let me speak. Hear my words. She want to, She's asking for permission to speak and hear the words of your main servants. Please let not my master regard this scoundrel N Nabal. He's a scoundrel. Don't pay any attention to him. For as his name is, so is he. See, when people, when the Aubrey's, when they saw this word, Nabal, they knew what Nabal mean. They knew what it was from. Why would someone name him Nabal? Fool. This is what they called him. Fool. Foolish. Stupid. He's a stupid, but they named him stupid. Impious. Abandoned. Wicked. They called him wicked. Look at these names. And here we see the Arabs use the same extent of a significant word. They have the same word in Arabi. Arabi and Aubrey, brothers and sisters, they have the same word. They will tell you what this word means. Foolish, stupid person. So they named this person this foolish name and he walked according to his name make sure you name your kids after their virtue after who they are why did they name him this but i don't know why but the most High made sure it fit it fit the bill the most high didn't change his name see if he was a righteous person the most high would have to change his name no longer will your name be nabal but this will be your name now he kept the same name and as she says, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. See, you're with someone. They may not have a wicked name. They may give themselves a righteous name. You're with someone that folly is with him or folly is with her. They come with folly. And the Most High doesn't want us mingling and mangling in folly. 